Hi, it's Dina. So today I'm going to teach you how to use Canva.com to quickly and easily create cover shots for your blog posts. This is a cover shot right here. It is the main graphic that goes along with your blog post. So let's just jump into Canva and get started. This is a tutorial for absolute beginners with zero design skills. So Canva.com is a free design tool. You're going to need to create your account, but when you have your account, this is how you do it. You come into Canva and you see they already have some options for you. You can click more, but we don't need to because what we need is a blog graphic and you see it's 800 pixels by 1200 pixels. That's a really great size. So we're going to create that and I'm going to show you how I would create a version of one of my blog cover shots, something like this. But I definitely want you to create your own style and Canva has lots of templates um, that will help you select a style that's right for you. You can also look over on Pinterest because really the beautiful thing about these cover shots is that people can pin your blog posts to Pinterest and share them on other social media channels. So feel free to look around on Pinterest to get some inspiration. I recommend you just take notes about what you like and don't like. Don't try to steal somebody's idea and create exactly what they created. All right. So remember, I clicked blog graphic, which brought me to this screen. This is my workspace right here on the right hand side, and this is my design panel. And then this section in here is where they have some pre-designed ones that you can use and then just change out the colors and the words. So here's one, look at this. This is so easy. You could just pull this over. Did you see how I dragged and dropped? You can just pull that over and use that one as is. But let's say you want to create your own. I'm going to show you how to create something similar to what I create for my blog. You can upload your own images and so Canva makes it super simple. You wouldn't need to go out and find your own images but if you want to um, you would just click upload your own images here and then you go get your image and I found my image at my favorite image site called Pixabay, pixabay.com and there is a link, there are lots of links in this blog post on my website that give you resources for where to find photography and other tools that are very helpful for non-designers but do you see here the image is now on my work dashboard so I'm gonna just drag it over onto my canvas and I want it to be bigger so I'm going to grab a corner and make it bigger okay, center it okay now I want to add um, you know this opaque square or something similar so I want a square. I type that into the search and it pulls up options for me. I'm going to pull this one over onto my workspace and Canva is so helpful because see that it has guides that help me line things up. If I wanted to I could, you know it doesn't have to be a square, I could make it into a rectangle if I wanted to but I want it to be a square and it's pink. I don't want it to be pink. So I'm going to click on the color palette and click white. Now, if I were using a color from my specified color palette, I'd click on the plus button and I could type in that hexadecimal code here. But for these purposes, or this purpose, I am going to use this white and I want this white to be a little transparent so I can see the image behind it. So I clicked this down arrow and I'm going to click transparency and watch. I can fade this in and out so that whatever text I put over the top of it will really pop. So now let's add some text. I could create my own text. I could just pull over one of these and 
create that. Okay, if you want to, you can make it bigger. But uh, let's say you don't like this and you want to try. I'm just, I just clicked on the little trash can to get rid of it. Look at all these fun things that Canva gives to you. You can just pull this over. That's really neat. I want to make that a little smaller so it fits into this white area. I'm going to click on, I can click on this text. I could change the font style if I wanted to. And this is where your brand personality palette comes in handy. All of my clients get a visual map of the fonts I want them to use, the colors I want them to use. And this is all stuff we decided upon in their branding process and it's really important that you stick within your color palette and your font palette because while it is fun to play around with all the different fonts available um, you're gonna be unhappy in the long run because eventually your brand is just gonna be this crazy carnival and you don't want that less is more so you can update this you add the text you want whatever you want. And I'm not spelling things correctly because I'm not. I'm just playing. <laughs> um, so you could keep working on this. You can keep adding text in here for your blog post. You'll notice on Pinterest the ones that really pop are just the simplest ones. They're just so simple, simple, simple. So like I said just a couple seconds ago, less is more. Okay, and then you want to make sure that you add your watermark. And let's say I wanted to add something along the lines of, here's my watermark right here. It's always the same how I do that, and you don't have to do it exactly like I do it, that's for sure. Um, let's pull another square. This is just super, super simple. I mean, you could spend a lot of time playing around with this and creating exactly what you want. I'm clicking on the color, I'm gonna make that white. Going to add transparency again. Now here, if I wanted to, I could add my logo symbol and I uploaded that the same way I uploaded the photo and I can pull this over and I can make this smaller. And then I have the um, option to move this element around. I can make sure it's centered. I could add, you know, um, and I do suggest that you add your URL. I would add simpleandsoulful.com and I would do it the same way where I just go over to the text palette, grab some text, pull it over, resize it, make it the font I want. But this is how you do it. And then up here, um, you're going to type the name of your image file. Type the name of image and then when you're done you just download it and you're going to download it as an image for web and you're going to curate these images in your in a folder either on Google Drive that's what I like to use or on your desktop so this is the process. This is step by step, very simple. You can batch process this so you could come up with some blog post titles and if you download the checklist that goes along with this blog post um, it walks you through how to do that but you could batch process creating images for your blog posts. So I hope this took some of the fear and overwhelm out of creating images 
for all of your marketing, whether it's your blog posts, your ebooks, your opt in freebies, your social media banners, your Facebook covers, posters for workshops and classes you're teaching. You can create images to use in your slides for your presentations, but Canva makes it really simple. It's great for non designers, and I hope you give it a whirl. So, good luck, and let me know if you have any questions.